couple of days ago when you were talking about Easy Goer. She's his exercise rider. She says he's a bright horse. He likes to stop and eat on the way back from the track after morning exercise. As you said, to take you to all his favorite restaurants on the the favorite of this big crowd at Churchill Downs at one to five. Uh, Personal Lenson went out on favorite at uh, two to five and the pre Kentucky Derby favorite for next year. He's about to run. Here's Tom Durkin. Six months from today, they will place the starting gate a furlong and a half up the track to start the 115th Kentucky Derby. And this fifth Breeders' Cup Juvenile will go a long way to determine the early favorite. Easy goer now, two to five in the gate. And they're off. Music Mercy broke like a bullet. Comes right out for the lead. Double Quick is going to run with him early now. Double Quick is there. Is it true? Is hustled away from the gate as the field moves into the first turn. Is it true? And Double Quick down. Those two run at each other early. It's two lengths. My hair is red. Saving ground on the inside third. Music Mercy is alongside fourth by two. In two bucks came away in fifth position. And then his leading prospect who's in hand racing in sixth. Easy Goer has settled in seventh place now. He's about eight lengths off the lead as they make their way onto the back stretch. The trailers are European Tegel, Dr. Bazaar toward the inside, and the early trailer is Mountain Ghost as they continue up the back stretch. Is it true on the inside? With heavy pressure from Double Quick, those two moving at a demanding pace as they continue up the back stretch. Meher's Red is trying to stay with those two in third. Leading prospect now has asked for more run toward the inside. And Music Merci now is putting in his run as the field moves into the far turn. Then it's into Bucks. And now Easy Goer is starting to find his stride. Tegel is alongside him. Those two are now seven lengths off the lead of Is It True, who has turned back the early challenge of Double Quick. But on the outside, the Californian Music Merci now looms boldly in second. And Easy Goer now continues the gain for the back of the pack. Six lengths off the lead as the field turns for home. Tegel has floated outside him. They're set down for the drive. Is it true? Full out now to hold off Music Merci. And Easy Goer looms boldly now, a threatening presence on the outside. They're in the final furlong. Is it true? Pink eye all over him. Easy Goer closing on the outside, a 60 from home. Is it true? Trying to hold on. Easy Goer can't get to him. It is. Is it true? Who goes on to win it by a length? Easy Goer is defeated and farther back. It was Tangle. Pin Kai went to that strong whip, his trademark in the stretch, and got Is It True Home to win the fifth Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Owner of the San Diego Chargers, Gene Klein, who spent a lot of money in thoroughbred racing and gets another payback on Is It True? 2040 to win, 360 and 280. Easy Goer, odds on favorite, pays 240 to place 220 to show, 320 for the European invader, Tegel. Two to one. One to ten to Onion and the Whitney. Pete, those bring back some memories to you, I'm sure. Well, there's so many ways to lose a race, no matter how much the best your horse is. There's no question about that. Uh, I, I can remember at the old Tropical Park in Florida where an alley alligator came on the track and a horse tripped over him that was 10 <laughs> lengths in front uh, back to last or, or next to last just before expensive decision uh, he will wait uh, they're training this horse to come from out of it and then just bit past the half mile pole going to the turn look out how do you measure greatness 133 and 2 is the stakes record it belongs to secretary in 1973 here comes the champion easy goer led into the starting gate Number five, Pat Day on the outside. They're ready to run in the Gotham Stakes of 1989. Marshall Cassidy sends them off, and they're underway in the Gotham. There. Contrail Road on the outside of Diamond Adani. Those two are vying for the early lead. Have three on expensive decision. Texian on the inside and Easy Goer on the outside as they leave the chute. Now, Easy Goer has made a bold move on the outside to move alongside Diamond Donny. Cantrell Road joins them in third. And on the rail, Texian, expensive decision is now fifth. Diamond Donny continues to lead. The quarter has been run in 22 and the two. Texian on the rail. And alongside is Cantrell Road. Those three are now across the track and have a length and a half on Easy Goer, then expensive decision. The half. Extremely fast, 44 and 1, they round the far turn. It's still Diamond Donny, and Easy Goer remains far back. Diamond Donny leading by a length and a half. Now, Easy Goer has made a move again on the outside, and Easy Goer takes second by a length. Texian on the rail third, then expensive decision, and Cantrell Road has dropped into fifth. 
Three quarters, eight, and three. The pace is still fast as Easy Goer moves alongside Diamond Donnie. Easy Goer now gets the lead and goes clear by two. Diamond Donnie is second by three. Then expensive decision on Texian. Cantrell Road has been eased. They pass 16th full. Easy Goer has the lead. Easy Goer wins by 10. Then Diamond Donnie was second and expensive decision third in the seventh race. The Gotham Stakes at Aqueduct. Thank you, Marshall. That is gentlemen. how a champion should perform. We're waiting to get the time now for the Gotham Stakes. But he did it like a champion should. He jumped to the front. And there it is. That would be a new stakes and a new track record for a mile at Aqueduct. 132 and 2. The old mark was easy goer. On to the legend secretary to 1973. Good ride accepting the trophy with his baby daughters. And it's official. 380, 260, and 240. Irish actor, 320 and 3. And show America at 360. And the final order. Mistakes, easy goer. Well, like a 1 to 10 should. 210, 210, 210. Diamond Donnie was second, 260, 210. By the way, that exact of 5 2 returned $9.40. Expensive decision, also 210. So the bridge jumpers. Being held at 9 to 2. And the three other horses, Sunday Silence at 5 to 2. The favorite, Houston at 4 to 5. And Hawkster at 8 to 1. Ridden by Fernando Toro, trained by the young Frenchman Yves Seguin at 40 to 1. Flying Continental is owned by Jack Kent Cook, the owner of the Washington Redskins, and ridden by Eddie Delahousse. And you see his odds there at 9 to 1. Number 3, Music Merci at 5 to 1 under Gary. Continental under Delahousse. I think it's time to come back up to you again. Dave Johnson for the call of the race. And there goes Gary Stevens in on a different team this year. He won the Santa Anita Derby and the Kentucky Derby last year for trainer D. Wayne Lucas on winning colors. And, of course, Lucas now has the big horse, the $2.9 million Houston. Four to five as they are all in line. Ready for the start. Santa Anita Derby. And number six, Hawkster, broke through the gate, delays the start. A good job by the assistant starter, and Chris McCarron was able to get him in a snug hold so that the rest of the field still in the gate and Hawkster delays this contest for just a second. It's a half a million dollars for nine furlongs. The track is fast. The Derby record, the Santa Anita Stakes record, 147 set by Lucky Debonair and the track record 145 and with Hawkster. Starter Tucker Slender ready to send them on their way. And they're off. From between horses, Flying Continental, and now the gray Music Merci with Gary Stevens to the front by a hit. Mr. Bowles on the inside, up to contest the issue early, and Houston on the outside rushes up a close third. Sunday silences between horses in fourth, then Flying Continental back to fifth, and Hawkster is sixth and last as they round the clubhouse turn. And Houston on the outside takes command. Lafitte Pinkai Jr. aboard. At the rail, the gray Music Merci snugly in the second spot by a half length. And Sunday silence with Pat Valenzuela is content to be third at this point. Then a gap of two in the long shot, Mr. Bowles along the inside. Hawkster has moved up on the outside and now takes fourth by a head. Mr. Bowles with Fernando Toro drops back into fifth. And Flying Continental, the late speed specialist with Eddie Delahousie, is the trailer. The quarter in 22 and 3, they're flying 45 and 3, the half mile. Down the back stretch, Houston in front. The 4 to 5 shot looks, has it by half a length. But now on the inside, here comes Music Merci. Back to challenge. Sunday Silence on the outside, right there in third and gaining on the top two. Midway around the turn, three-eighths of a mile to go. Here comes Sunday Silence, up to take command on the outside. Music Merci at the rail is second in the favorite. Houston is back to third. A quarter of a mile to go, and it's Sunday Silence trained by Charlie Whittingham on the outside, taking command. Music Merci cuts the corner and holds the second spot. Flying Continental is gaining in third, and Houston is out of it, dropping far back. Looks like he'll finish last. And down the stretch they come. Sunday Silence drawing away and jumping to the head of the West Coast contingent as Sunday Silence annihilates this field, taking the Santa Anita Derby by some eight 
make that 12 lengths. It's Flying Continental up for the play spot and a photo between Music Merci and Hawkster for the show spot. A lot of stories here. One is the time, 147 and three, three-fifths of a second off the stakes record. The other is Houston, who finished off the board. And the other is Sunday Silence, who takes a big step to the run for the Roses. And Charlie Whittingham comes to the winner's circle with one eye on Kentucky and one eye on Easy. Flying Continental, 340, and Music Merci, the show horse, 340, Houston finished finished fifth next to last the exact of four and two seventy nine dollars and fifty cents the time one forty seven and three fifths well off uh, the track record and just three see that wind whipping the flag you don't see it too often second favorite in the betting is triple buck at eight to one millet's on at thirty seven to one but here's the reason for the other high odds easy goer the favorite at one to nine he'll pay two dollars and ten cents if he wins the race today three other horses diamond donny at eleven to one a.m swinger at nine to one and rock point at here, put the word winner. There's Pat Day, and let's go up to Dave Johnson. And as Easy Goer moves into line, I think you can forget about a track record or a stakes record. This track is dull and slow. If they go the half mile in under 47 seconds, they will be going fast. And if the three-quarter time is 111, it's going to be sizzling. Rock Point, a steadily improving three-year-old, is the last one to move into line. We're ready for the start. Once around the aqueduct oval, a mile and an eight. And from between horses, Diamond Donnie with Vince Pricelli takes command quickly, drawing away by a length and a half. And Easy Goer is in second. There goes Triple Buck now claiming the rail. On the outside, AM Swinger is fourth. Then at the inside, their own Colt Militron. And between horses, Rock Point. About six lengths separate the entire field around the turn, racing to the back stretch. Diamond Donnie has the lead by a length and three quarters. Easy goer on the outside, right there, second by three parts of a length. Triple bucket the rail is third, saving ground. And on the outside, there's Rock Point in fourth. Then two back, and the Roan Colts bring up the rear. Militron, and at the back of the pack, AM Swinger. The first quarter in 24 and 1 as they race down the back stretch, and it's still Diamond Donnie, the speed horse at the rail, leading it by a head, and on the outside, Easy Goer with Pat Day easing up alongside the challenge. Now those two are heads apart. The half in 48 and 3. It's not fast, but it's a very slow track. And now Easy Goer on the outside challenges Diamond Donnie at the rail. Diamond Donnie lets out a notch, and Easy Goer is about a half length off the lead. In the middle of the track, here comes Rock Point, gaining ground with Bill Fox at the rail. Triple Buck is fourth. Then uh, it's four and a half lengths farther back to A.M. Swinger and Militron. Easy goer takes command. Three quarters in 113 and two fifths. As the field straightens away in the stretch, Easy Goer has the lead. But here comes the improving Rock Point on the outside. And down the stretch they come. Easy goer has the lead by one. Rock Point on the outside. Easy goer has the lead. Goes off by two. Rock point second. Triple buck third. The Wood Memorial goes to Easy Goer with Pat Day aboard. Winning it by about three and a half lengths. It's a photo between Rock Point and Triple Buck for the place at show spot. Not the margin of victory in the Gotham Mile, but a convincing victory here this afternoon on a dull strip. Answering a lot of questions. Yes, he can go around two turns. Yes, he possibly should be considered in the with the word greatness. And he is the odds-on choice for the run for the Roses two weeks from today. 20 and 210, Rock Point 360 and 210. Triple Buck was third, paying 210. The Exacta, three and six, paid $8.20. They don't get much lower than that to time. 150 and three-fifths on this kind of dull track. There. And look what they've done with their lives. Become wonderful successes and certainly great models for any young young man who has any problem at all whatsoever. You look can at keep, these boys. You can keep your eye on the odds on the bottom of the screen. 1A is Shy Tom. They're white, no, excuse me, Houston. One would be Shy Tom. The teammates trained by Wayne Lucas. I might add that it was an unusually, the paddock at Churchill Downs is always a test for a horse because it is unlike any other day, the crowds are bad. But today with the umbrellas, there were wind, around, wind was please. blowing, hats around, were around. flying around and the crowd around was around. unusually noisy. Chris Antley on Shy Tom. Around the ring with him, please. One second. There's Pat Valenzuela. He'll be on the second favorite, Around Sunday Silence. Made by Charlie Whittingham, moving in the line now. Turn off. 
Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Irish actor trained by Leroy Jolly, who won the Kentucky Derby in 75 with Foolish Pleasure and in 80 with Genuine Risk. Post positions drawn by Lott. Come on, bring him up close, boys. Let's go. Come on. Now, awe inspiring and easy goer will be the last two horses in the main gate. All right, turn that 14. Then the own Colt here. Northern Wolf. Come on, with it. Easy goer is in. Four to five. You got two. And the two field horses, Wind Splitter and Northern Wolf. This is what thoroughbred racing is all about as we get set for the start of the dirt. They're all in line and they're off. And Sunday silence at the start comes right in and bumps Triple Buck. Houston takes the early lead on the outside. Gansel, clever Trevor along the inside is third. And here comes Northern Wolf and again a few bumps. And Easy Goer is fifth at this point on the outside in great position, passing the stance for the first time. Houston with Pink Kai on the outside in front of Neck. On the inside, it's Clever Trevor, second by two and a half. Then a field horse, Northern Wolf, the Roan, in third. Sunday Silence comes out a bit from the rail in fourth. And uh, Pat Valenzuela looks over his shoulder and sees that it's Pat Day in fifth on the outside with the favorite Easy Goer. Dancel with Snyder is sixth. Flying Continental is seventh. Wind Splitter is eighth. Irish Actor is ninth. Triple Buck on the outside, tenth. Awe Inspiring, eleventh. Shy Tom is twelfth. Western Playboy is thirteenth. On the outside, Faultless Ensign is fourteenth. Hawkster at the back of the pack is fifteenth and last. And about 18 lengths separate the entire field. The first half file in 46 and 3 fifth seconds. And Houston, trained by D. Wayne Lucas, winging it on the front end. Clever Trevor, the Oklahoma bred at the rail, is second. On the outside, Northern Wolf, a close third. Then a gap of two and a half, and Sunday Silence is fourth. Dancel is fifth, and the favorite easy goer is sixth on the outside. Oh, inspiring as Stablemate is alongside and charging up and now alongside easy goer. Then comes Triple Buck and Flying Continental. It's still Houston in front by three parts of a length. Northern Wolf second. Here comes Sunday Silence on the outside. The entry of easy goer and oh, inspiring next as they straighten away in the stretch. Sunday Silence with Pat Valenzuela comes over, has a little contact with Northern Wolf. On the inside, Houston is dropping out of it. Dancel is still tough. On the inside, then comes Easy Goer and awe inspiring, but with a 16th of a mile to go. And here comes Sunday Silence through this stretch, coming to the finish of the Derby. Sunday Silence wins this Derby by two lengths. It's a photograph between Easy Goer and on the outside, awe inspiring. So it's Sunday Silence. Easy goer and awe inspiring. One, two, three. Sunday silence trained by Charlie Whittingham. He said he would win the Derby. And it was big words from Charlie when he says he likes a horse. They won it. Pat Valenzuela, Sunday silence, unofficial, the winner of the Kentucky Derby. We're out a little bit in the stretch. He was bumped and bothered a bit in the run to the first turn. But Let's no have denying a look. Sunday silence. Let's have a look at the start now. Let's go back. First, Houston. Houston, number 1A. Houston, of course, we expected to go for the lead. And Second here from he the goes. left. Yeah. Lafitte Pinkai in the orange hat there. Houston in the white bridle, and he rides him out quickly to the lead. Along the rail there, you see Clever Trevor, hard knocking little horse. He shows speed, and he's going to go up and try to stalk Houston. And there they go, headed for the first turn. Houston, as expected, on the lead. Now let's look at Easy Goer's start, number 2B. And Sunday Silence in the middle there in the yellow. He, oh. oh, yeah, he definitely had a good bump there. Easy Goer gets a clean start. Sunday Silence, he really had kind of a rough trip himself for Oars, who came away a winner. Now watch on the outside now. Watch on the outside. Northern Wolf as he cuts across. He pinches off Easy Goer. Pretty good mm. right here. Oh, yeah. this is, look. Sunday Silence got a little of the horse to that too there. Real rodeo. It always is when you have this many horses, Jim, and when there's some speed horses on the outside trying to get to that first turn. Now, here they are. Houston has been setting some reasonably comfortable fractions, and Sunday Silence is making his move, but right here, easy goer. See him back there in the red hat? He isn't. He's a little bit crowded, but he's not going like a, you'd think a winner would, a heavy even money favorite. They turn for home. Houston's been taking the measure of, and here comes Sunday Silence, but then he begins his zigzag through the stretch. As Pat Valenzuela said, he was ducking from this and ducking from that, but 
Apparently the crowd bothered him on the start when they had that great roar, and then Pat said they bothered him in the stretch. Well, he's he's his first start of his life. He, he lost because he was a little green in a few other races. He's had a few problems. He's still a pretty lightly raced colt with a lot of future, but certainly a colt, as Charlie said, he's the best he's had, and he proved it today. I wonder how fast he'll run if he runs straight. <laughs> <laughs> he ran a mile, a mile and three eighths today, I think. Incidentally, the... The uncle of Pat Valenzuela, Ismael, known as Milo Valenzuela, won the Kentucky Derby, and now the family has another one. Great family of riders there. Not a big cold here, this one. Big hearted, though. You have Sunday Silence, who went off at three to one, paying eight twenty, three dollars and three sixty, and the show pool is skewed because you've got the entry finishing second and third, thus. They pay 260 to place and 340 to show, and the exacta Sunday silence to the entry pays $15.20. The Derby winner is next. One back on the outside, everybody relax. Just Northern Wolf, the Roan Colt. We're ready to go, all in line. And pulverizing quickly jumps to the lead. Houston on the outside in second. Dancel between them third. Northern Wolf on the outside is fourth. And Sunday Silence is right there and now fourth, moving up between horses. Passing the stands for the first time. Northern Wolf takes the lead by a hit. Houston with Cordero on the inside, saving ground in second. Pulverizing is dropped back to be third. Then on the outside, it's Sunday Silence fourth. Easy goer on the outside is fifth at this point, three and a half lengths off the lead. Larry Snyder with Dansel at the rail is next. Then comes Rock Point and three lengths back to the trailer Hawkster, who is 15 lengths off the leader, who is now Houston as they move on to the back stretch. The first quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. It's fast, but not that fast. Down the back stretch. Houston with Cordero leading the pack by three lengths. Northern Wolf is second, and now the Kentucky Derby winner. On the outside, Sunday Silence takes second, and here comes Easy Goer with a quick move on the outside with Pat Day. Going down the back stretch. It's Houston in front by a head. Easy goer, the favorite up to challenge. Sunday silence between horses in tight quarters there. Back into third. Dancel is fourth. Northern Wolf fifth. Rock point on the outside. Sixth. Pulverizing has had it. He's back to seventh. And Hawkster hasn't started to run. Midway on the turn. Dancel on the outside to the front. On the outside. Here comes Sunday silence to challenge. Now they're heads apart. Sunday silence with Pat Valenzuela takes the lead at the quarter pole. Easy goer back into second position. Dancel coming on third in the stretch. On the outside it's Sunday Silence. On the inside easy goer. And down the stretch they come. On the outside it's Sunday Silence. Easy goer with Pat Day. Back to challenge. Hands apart. Easy goer on the inside with a slight lead. On the outside Sunday Silence. The rest of them far back. Here's the finish of the Preakness. Sunday Silence and easy goer. Photo finish. Noses apart. I can't tell. But on the outside Sunday Silence with Pat Valenzuela. He's waving his whip like he thinks he won it. The time, 153 and 4 fifth seconds. A dramatic photo finish. Either Sunday Silence on the outside, the winner of the Derby, who will try to make it two steps to the Triple Crown, or easy go are at the rail with Pat Day. What a finish! Circle, just in case, 153 and 4. We did not get the track record or stakes record that we thought might be achieved here this afternoon. It was. Well, the, as we said, the people, some people just don't want to believe the horse. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is either an inquiry or an objection. Have to be a steward's objection. Inquiry. No, it's an objection, Charlie. Uh, Charlesy. It's an objection on the board, not an inquiry. Pat Day is claiming a foul in the stretch run. This is the steward's room right. where they'll look very carefully at these pictures, and this is why we continue to say unofficial, unofficial, he unofficial. Was, he was close. On Sunday silence. This now is an objection. It's a jockey's objection. It's not a steward's inquiry. Generally speaking, a steward's inquiry would have a better chance of being upheld than a jockey's objection. Not that they can't take him down. There is the photograph of the finish, as you can see. If a Hollywood director uh, filmed a race, it would need a uh, hundred takes to get it to look like this. And, and we've just witnessed a dramatic stretch drive. 
and two jockeys objections as it turns out because the third place finisher rock point and the fourth place finisher dancel also involved dancel filing an objection against rock point now the head-on of the stretch with sunday silence on the yellow silks an easy goer on the inside. What do you think, Dave? Pat Valenzuela whipping right-handed. Looks like he's keeping a straight course. Easy goer along the inside. Yes, he is in tight quarters. Pat Day gathers the reins and comes on to re-challenge again. The left-handed whip. You know, it's interesting. I I think maybe Easy Goer was leaning over. He was maybe trying to savage this horse, trying to bite uh, Sunday Silence. Uh, you can't tell exactly, but look at this. Finish of this race, noses apart, and at the wire, Sunday Silence, the unofficial winner, Pat Day, claims follow and says he was impeded through the stretch. One thing is certain, it is the third fastest time, 153 and 4. Only Tank's prospect and Gate Dancer ran faster preaks. To me, it definitely looked as if Sunday Silence... Uh, maintained his line in that imaginary lane and I would not take him down uh, the action in the backstretch Sunday silence was in tight quarters uh, as they reached uh, oh the far turn here comes a big move by easy goer on the outside Houston is trying to last out there as long as he can with jockey Cordero easy goer just brushes past quickly takes command Valenzuela has to check his mount there and as you see probably lost a step or two easy goer who is a step off slowly uh, as we as we watch the start uh, gets to the front here around the far turn now Cordero puts Houston in gear again and Valenzuela three wide brings the Kentucky Derby winner up for this final dramatic last quarter mile and a great move by Valenzuela for just a moment when Easy Goer started to make his move. It appeared he might leave Sunday Silence in the dust, but that wasn't to be. And here, of course, a, a stretch drive that will be replayed for years. And these two just leave the rest of them in their wake through the stretch. Day on the inside, Valenzuela on the outside, whipping and driving. Sunday Silence, jockey in the yellow cap. Easy Goer, the favorite on the inside. To no avail, though, because Sunday Silence unofficially is holding on to this preakness. And here's the way they came to the finish. And again, just to, to bring you completely up to date, not only do we have an objection filed by Day against Valenzuela, but an objection filed by Larry Snyder, who finished fourth aboard Dancel, against Chris Antley, who finished third above Rock Point, and we have just learned both foul claims have been disallowed. The result is official. Sunday Silence has won two-thirds of the Triple Crown. He is the official winner. Easy Goer finishes second. Rock Point is third. That is upheld. Dancel is fourth. And there are the prices. 620 for the win. And Pat Day again. Seven competitors. So if Sunday Silence does it, he will have to face, as you see, nine others. Mile and a half. I understand that this is a very tough field for the assistant starters, especially Triple Buck, who will have three guys, one on either side and one in the actual stall there, handling him, making sure that he gets away quickly. Rock Point also tough at the start. You see the assistant starters getting him in the line. That's Bobby Duncan leading Sunday Silence into the gate. A mile and a half of dirt racetrack between this horse and history. And here is the major competition. Easy go. Coupled with Owen Spurn. Post positions drawn by lot. That's why they're not in that particular order. All three-year-olds, all carrying 126 pounds. Awe-inspiring is next. Shook McGay, he said before we went on the air, he thought he'd finish third with awe-inspiring. And Firemaker is the last one to move into line. We're ready for the Belmont 1989. Will Sunday Silence win the Triple Crown? Rock Point is acting up. And Barrow. Sunday Silence on the outside grabs the early lead. Then comes Le Voyageur up alongside and between horses. Easy Goer is right there. Firemaker in the middle of the racetrack is fourth. Then comes Rock Point, Triple Buck claims the rail as they round the clubhouse turn. It's Le Voyageur and Randy Romero on the front end, leading the pack by a length and a quarter. Triple Buck along the inside is second by a hit. There goes Sunday Silence on the outside. Rock Point between horses fourth. Easy Goer is fifth on the outside, three off the rail. Two lengths farther back, it's Fire Maker. Then a gap of two and Hawkster, followed by awe-inspiring Imbibe and Irish actors, tenth and last, as they move to the backstretch. 
On the front end, it's still the Voyageur running the first race of his life in the United States, the first time on dirt. In front by a length and a quarter. Sunday Silence reserved in second position. Triple Buck is gaining a bit on the inside. Easy goer on the outside between horses, Rock Point. Now moving down the back stretch. The first quarter in 23 and 1, the half in 47 seconds. That's three seconds faster than the affirmed Alidar Belmont. Down the back stretch, Le Voyageur in front by three and a half lengths. With Sunday Silence second, then Easy Goer on the outside third. Rock Point is fourth by a head. Triple Buck along the inside fifth. Firemaker is sixth by two. Hawkster is seventh. Awe Inspiring is eighth. Imbibe Race is ninth. And far back, that's Irish Actor tenth and about 20 lengths off the leader. But it's still Le Voyageur in his American debut, leading the pack three parts of a length. Now Pat Valenzuela asks for speed, and the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner Sunday Silence responds. Easy Goer is also closing in on the top two. Midway around the turn, Sunday Silence takes the lead and looks to the Triple Crown. Here comes Easy Goer on the outside to challenge. Le Voyageur is hanging tough. Those three across the track, and the others are far back. A quarter of a mile to go in the Belmont. Easy Goer on the outside takes command. Sunday Silence moves to the outside for the drive. The Voyager is now in third, and down the stretch they come. It's Easy Goer for the furlong to the finish in front by five. Sunday Silence appears beaten. The Voyager is third. Down the stretch, and it's Easy Goer with Pat Day winning the Belmont and denying Sunday Silence the Triple Crown. Charlie Whittingham. Arthur Hancock. Denny Phipps. And there's Ogden Phipps. With his back there. The beaten favorite, Sunday Silence. No triple crown winner. It'll be at least 12 years. And they're the winner. And the congratulations from one pat to another. Unofficial results, easy goer. The winner, Sunday Silence, second, Le Voyageur from across the ocean. The mystery horse came in and finished third after setting the pace most of the way around. 226 flat, is that? If so, that's the second fastest Belmont of all time. There is the word, and the prices will be coming right up. Easy goer, 520, 280, and 240. Sunday Silence, $3.260. and Le Voyageur, $4.60 in his American debut. And his only his second race on the dirt. To one to five. Lustra crypto clearance. Second choice, nine to two. Then it's tri-team try was a late scratch home builder. The Bud Long shot is back to 12 to one. Forever Silver, four to one. Second choice, it's academic, the longest price at 31 to one. Come on stakes. You see the stakes and track record. 147 tri-jet in 1974. One in the same. That could be threatened today. We've had some very fast times, some other races there. Now you see going in the five horse forever silver. That is the second choice on the board, or third choice at four to one. Crypto clearance the entry at nine to two. Easy goer at one to five. It's academic goes in. They're set to run. The Whitney handicap was listed at the starting gate, and Marshall Cassidy will have the call. Home Builder going for the lead on the inside. Easy Goer is challenging that early lead as Lustra moves up quickly on the outside. They approach the last turn. Lustra now gets the lead by our link. Home Builder now second. In tight quarters on the rail. Easy Goer on the outside for Ever Silver. Then it's Asadamic and Crypto Clearance is sixth. They continue around the clubhouse turn. Lustra leads by our length and a half. Home Builder second by the same. Forever Silver is now third. Easy Goer has dropped back into fourth. They're on to the back stretch. The quarter, 24 flat. Lustre on the rail still leads by Alec. Home Builder on the outside, second by three. Easy Goer has gained a bit on the inside of Forever Silver. Those two have a length on its house of Demick and Crypto Clearance on the rail is six. The 48 and one. They continue down the back stretch. 
Astra on the rail still leads away by a length. Home Builder on the outside, second by a length and a half. For Eversilver on the outside, once again takes third. Easy Goer has dropped back again. They round the far turn. Three quarters, 12 up. Lustra still leads on the rail by head. Home Builder on the outside, gaining ground is for Eversilver. And further out, it's Asademic. Easy Goer now fifth. Crypto clears on the far outside, making a move. We're in the search for Ever Silver now, takes over Bionic. Hitting ground on the outside, it's as a big brother out. Crypto clears, moving up on the outside. Easy goer, they pass the eighth row. Easy goer has now gained the lead. Easy goer gets clear bailing. For Ever Silver back into second on the outside. Crypto clearance, the three year old. New York's easy goer has the lead. Easy goer unofficially won the Whitney in a time of 147 and two. That is two fifths of a second off of the stakes and the track record here at Saratoga and Chelsea. He did it his way. Easy goer, 260, 220, 210. Forever Silver, 260 and 210. Crypto clearance, 210. So not big payoffs today. The official order finished. It's academic fourth. The Budweiser long shot fifth home builder and then as you'd expect Lustra the rabbit running sixth and last. One to five the odds on favorite Roy Danzig at 12 to one the field of six for the 120th running of the Traverse Stakes a crowd of 48,000 and some on hand that there is Pat Day in the traditional colors of the Phipps family the black with the cherry red cap. That's the Voyager there number four with Randy Romero and here is Easy Goer. Sire Aladar took this race in 78 on the disqualification and his grandsire paid 30 cents on the dollar taking it in 1966. Pat Day's had a big day already. He has two victories and looks for his third in this one and he's won the Travers twice before. And here's Roy Day. One second, back it up. You got him! And they're off in the Travers. A clean start and clever Trevor as expected toward the inside takes the lead. Roy Danzig surprisingly up on the outside into the second spot and will press the pace early. The Voyageur is now third. Easy goer to the outside fourth. Doc's leader is fifth and Shy Tom at the back of the pack as they round the clubhouse turn. It's clever Trevor in front and holding on to the lead by a length and a quarter. Roy Danzig is in second by two and a half. Make it three and a half now. Along the inside, Le Voyageur is racing third by a head, and the favorite at one to five, easy goer on the outside is fourth, just three and a half off the lead now. Then comes Shy Tom, then comes Doc's leader. The sextet moves on to the back stretch. The quarter, relatively slow, 23 and one, the half, 46 and four. Down the back stretch, the battle on the front end has clever Trevor on the inside in front now by half a length. Roy Danzig is second by four, and Easy Goer now takes third. Le Voyageur dropping back and forth. Shy Tom fifth, and Doc's leader at the back of the pack, 15 lengths off Clever Trevor. Round the far turn. Three quarters in one ten and three, and it's still Clever Trevor in front by two and a half lengths. And there goes Easy Goer making his move on the outside. Pat Day asks for speed and gets it boldly. Midway on the turn, Clever Trevor at the rail in front by a neck. Easy goer on the outside second. It's seven lengths back to Shy Tom, who has moved up on the rail now in third. At the quarter pole, Clever Trevor at the rail. Easy goer on the outside, stride for stride, head and head. Clever Trevor with a short lead. Easy goer on the outside, challenges, and down the stretch they come. Easy goer roars up and takes the lead. It's easy goer. about that that's Denny Phipps in the foreground the son of Ogden Phipps Denny himself the chairman of the jockey club and owner of many fine horses but there is the winner there is easy goer all right Frank here are the official results now easy goer the winner paying 240 220 and 210 clever Trevor three dollars and 210 shy Tom 210 none of the betters are going to get rich on those returns here today uh, at uh, 26 to 1 
Uh, number three is Forever Silver. He's at six to one. Slew City Slew is at five to one. And rounding out the field is Proper Reality. He is also at five to one. Num and they're off. Proper Reality was off a step slowly. It's Ace Ademic takes the early lead. Now there goes Slew City Slew charging up on the outside. Slew City Slew to the front by two. It's Ace Ademic is second. And then the Gray Colt, Forever Silver on the outside, moves third. A gap of two, easy goer, the heavy favorite, is fourth along the inside, three parts of a length, and Proper Reality at the back of the pack fifth. They move on to the back stretch, and Slew City Slew, with Jose Santos aboard, setting the early fractions, has a three and a half length advantage. It's Ace Ademic with Julie Crone, is second by three parts of a length. And then comes Forever Silver in third. Easy goer slips through on the inside, a close up fourth, and proper reality is the trailer. The first quarter in 24 and two fifth seconds. And as you see, it's Slew City Slew with an easy lead. He's in front by four lengths. It's Ace Demick is second by a half. None of the jockeys asking their mounts to run quickly yet. Forever Silver, the great colt who's good on the off track, is third at this point. And as you see, Easy Gore is not firing yet. Proper Reality is fifth and last and, and moving on the inside of the three-year-old. But now, Pat Day asks for speed, and you can see Easy Gore, the jockey wearing the cherry cap, is quickly into the second spot with dead aim at Slew City Slew. Slew City Slew has the lead, but now Forever Silver in gear on the outside with Asinto Vasquez. It's Ace Demick is between horses third. Easy Goer along the inside is fourth at this point and proper reality is the trailer they turn for home and it's still slew city slew and forever silver second day decides to go to the outside for the drive three sixteenths of a mile to the finish it's slew city slew forever silver and here comes the three-year-old easy goer on the outside and down the stretch they come easy goer sweeps up to take command on the inside forever silver second with a sixteenth of a mile to go. It's Easy Goer carrying top weight over an off track, winning the Woodward by two. It was its academic finishing second, and then Forever Silver was third, four lengths farther back, the trailers. Slew, Slew City Slew had set the early fractions, and Proper Reality was third. Final time, two minutes, one second. This was the you on the odds here with the big crowd at the windows, all inspiring, has now moved to a second choice of four to one. Big Earl is 18, Lavoisier at 17 to one, and Dale Shotgun is at 45. Dispersal, now third choice of the fans here at seven to one. Brujo at 30 to one. Sunday Sons is now at two to five after opening at even money and has now had almost $60,000 bet to win on him. Harmony Creek at 19 to one. Calling. And Pat Valenzuela adjusts the goggles, sun goggles, this afternoon. And the last horse, the Bud Wong shot, Harmony Creek moves into line. We're ready for Super Derby 10. All in line. And they're off. Big Earl toward the inside, quickly up to take command. Then Brujo, who's really leaning on dispersal. And Le Voyageur, now as they pass the stance for the first time, Le Voyageur in hand is up to challenge Big Earl at the rail. Big Earl with Donnie Howard in front by half a length. Le Voyageur is second. Then Dispersal is racing third. Brujo is in fourth position by a length and a half. Sunday Silence, the favorite, is fifth. Just three and a half off the lead. Dale's shotgun on the inside is next. Harmony Creek races seventh and awe-inspiring is eighth and last. Nine lengths from the leader who is Big Earl. Earl, the 21 to 1 shot. And it's Big Earl on the inside leading it by a neck as Le Voyageur now moves alongside to challenge. The battle on the front end. Le Voyageur puts a head in front. Big Earl back into the second spot and dispersal is third at this point. Sunday Silence has moved into fourth on the inside and is saving a bit of ground well in hand with jockey Pet Valenzuela. Now moving through between horses. The four top ones are tightly bunched and Pat Valenzuela looks for some racing room and finds it on the inside of Le Voyageur. Le Voyageur in front by a neck. Sunday Silence is in second position. Dispersal on the outside is racing third. A rather slow fractions, 112 and 1 for three quarters of a mile. And on the inside, it's Sunday Silence in front. 
Never been asked to run so far. Dispersal on the outside second. The Voyager is third. Big Earl is fourth now. All inspiring. Gains ground fifth. Brujo is sixth on the outside as the as La Voyager gets pinched back and Harmony Creek is eighth and last. As they straighten away in the stretch on the inside, Sunday silence. On the outside, that's dispersal. All inspiring is gaining with every stride. And down the stretch they come. And Sunday silence roars out, leaving the field behind with a 16th of a mile to go. He's in front by nine. Through the stretch, it's all Sunday silence. And he takes Super Derby 10 by seven lengths. It was Big Earl between horses finishing second. Then on the outside, it was awe-inspiring, followed at the rail by Dispersal, who was fourth. Really a tremendous comeback performance by Sunday Silence, who lost his last two and then comes back this afternoon with Super Derby 10 in two minutes, three and one-fifth seconds. And say here, and here are the prices now. 280, 260, 220, Big Earl, the local 780, 220, all inspiring third for $2.20. Let's go to Dave. Bonus race coverage. Take a look at the stretch drive of the Ruffian Handicap. 32 to 1, quite an overlay right now on uh, Forever Silver, but it is early in the cycle. Crypto clearance at 13 to 1. It's academic at 38 to 1. And prize right now, the California Invader is the second choice, but even so, he is uh, still double figures there at 10 to 1. That's record. The track record set in that fantastic performance of the Triple Crown of Secretariat, the stakes record here in 1983 as Slew of Gold came home in two minutes, 26 and one-fifth seconds. And here, biography and twice with Slew of Gold in the mid-80s and prized the other three-year-old ready and waiting. Seven of them, mile and a half, the Jockey Club Gold Cup. And they're off. And Forever Silver from between horses and prized with Eddie Delahousie on the outside. Jack of Clubs racing in third position at the rail. Impersonator is fourth. An easy goer is right there between horses. There's five of them across the track going for the lead as they go to the first turn. Impersonator has the lead by a length and a quarter. Jack of Clubs in second. From between horses, easy goer drops back a bit. And there goes Prized, now taking over third. Easy goer is fourth about four lengths off the lead. Crypto Clearance is at the back of the pack, and between horses, we have It's a Sedemic, and our Forever Silver is now sixth. As they race to the back stretch on the front end, it's the two-horse impersonator with Richard Migliori showing the way by five lengths. Prize, the three-year-old second ahead, and now the other three-year-old, Easy Goer, charges up, storming up on the outside with Pat Day to take the second spot. Prized is back to third, and the great Colt Forever Silver is on the move. It's a Sedemic between horses, followed at the rail by Jack of Clubs, and then some five lengths back to the trailer, Crypto Clearance, who's 16 lengths off the leader, who is impersonator. The half mile in 48 and three-fifths seconds, that's three-fifths of a second slower than Slew of Gold's track record. Now, here we go with Impersonator in front by a length and a quarter, but as you see, Easy Goer is easily moving up alongside the challenge. It's Asademic is in third at this point. They go to the far turn. And Easy Goer takes command. Impersonator drops back. Forever Silver on the outside is on the move. Forever Silver, now with a half mile to go, is in the second spot. It's Asademic at the rail is racing in third. Crypto Clearance has moved up into fourth position. Then comes Jacket Clubs. Prized is dropping back. And Impersonator is the trailer. As they move to the top of the stretch, though, it's Easy Goer in front by a length and a quarter. Now Crypto Clearance puts in a run with Jose Santos on the outside. Forever Silver is back to third. They straighten away in the stretch. Day takes a look over his shoulder, and he sees that Crypto Clearance is alongside. It looks like a two-horse race for the Belmont stretch. On the inside, Easy Goer, Crypto Clearance on the outside, and down the stretch they come, and Easy Goer draws clear by three. Crypto Clearance is second at 15 lengths to the other horses. Here's the finish of the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Well in hand, Easy Goer by three and a half lengths. Crypto Clearance gets the play spot, and far, far back it was Forever Silver, followed by Prize through Chase Ademic and Jack of Clubs. Yes, Easy Goer in two minutes, 29 and one-fifth seconds. Yes, a very, very easy performance. Easy Goer on his way to the Breeders' Crown.
in 229 and one again three seconds slower than a stakes record but time was not a factor here 220 220 210 for the bridge jumpers as that show pull really got enormous here before the race crypto clearance was second he goes over the three million dollar mark in earnings with a two hundred thousand dollar plus check 340 and 210 forever so karen on sunday silence may have silence may have a slight strategic edge and starting from the outside over pad day who was in the post position one on easy goer we'll see in that first turn and there are the current odds Again, easy goer, odds on at three to five, and Sunday silence at nine to five. Not much change there, but to show you how the crowd here favors those two, if you're going to take an exact bet of one and eight, uh, you, five dollars and twenty cents will be your return on a two dollar bet. Eight. The Derby and Preakness winner will move into post position number eight. Poised in the gate, Belmont winner, easy goer in post position one. They're standing in line. And they're off. Sunday silence breaks alertly. Easy goer was off a step slow toward the inside. Slew City Slew, blushing John in present value. And they're passing us now for the first time. Slew City Slew is out to take the early lead now. And he's opened up a quick lead here of two and a half lengths. Blushing John is second on the outside. Present value is third. Sunday silence is grading in fourth position. He's six lengths off the lead. Free Selecto is seventh. Four lengths back to Easy Goer. He is ten lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew as they move into the first turn and the trailers are crypto clearance and western playboy slew city slew and he zipped the opening quarter in 22 and two fifth seconds a brazen display of early speed in this mile and a quarter classic blushing john is tracking him as they make their way on to the back stretch now sunday silence poised on the outside third present value to his inside then me selecto Easy Goer is yet to do his best running. He is still nine lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew. He's five lengths behind Sunday Silence, and now he's beginning to roll. They've run a half mile in 46 and one fifth seconds. Slew City Slew weakening on the lead. Blushing John has been tracking him all the way. Sunday Silence bracing for the oncoming power of Easy Goer, who's right at his neck, and the stage is set with three furlongs to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Blushing John taking the lead, three-eighths of a mile out. It's Blushing John in front. Sunday Silence on the outside, gearing up now. He's left Easy Goer, two and a half lengths behind. They're coming to the top of the stretch, and Blushing John is under a hand ride. He leads by length and a half. Sunday Silence, a threatening presence on the outside. Easy Goer is set down, and he's put to a fierce drive. Coming to the final furlong, Sunday Silence surges to the front. Blushing John trying to fight back. Easy Goer with one final acceleration. And Sunday Silence holds on. And he wins by a desperate neck. Easy Goer was too late. Not enough to win it. And it was Sunday Silence in a racing epic. Silence and Easy Goer giving this record crowd all that it could have wanted. So often in the big matches, one might be disappointed, but not today. Two great horses finishing at the wire, a half length behind, and Sunday Silence takes the rubber match. Three out of four from this colt that wouldn't be bought. It was for sale for $30,000 twice, and no one would pay 20 and today has won $1,350,000 in this race and has $4.6 million third all time. And Chris McCarran had it perhaps. That outside post position for Sunday Silence was the difference. Went off at an even two to one and paid six dollars. Easy goer, 220, 210. Blushing John, a game run, gets three dollars for show and try. Race we've been waiting for. Sunday Silence on the outside. Easy goer at the right eye head and head coming to the eighth ball. Sunday Silence and Pat Valenzuela. Easy goer and Pat Day. Head and head through the stretch. What a horse race this one is. Easy goer and Sunday Silence going nose and nose in the preakness. Sunday Silence, easy goer. Here's the finish. Sunday Silence wins it by a nose. The condition of 1989 Horse of the Year and the leading Japanese stallion, Sunday Silence, is not getting any better, although he does continue to have Come the on. ability to yeah. stand up, and he is able to eat. But uh, 
The equine vets who are currently keeping an eye on him 24 hours around the clock, working in shifts, trying to make sure that he does get better, have acknowledged the fact that the next week or so they're going to have to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to euthanize the 16-year-old stallion. And you hope for the game that he uh, that he makes it through because uh, he's been such a prolific stallion over in Japan. We've seen a few of his offspring over in this country uh, at the sales and would love to see more, obviously, over the next couple of years. Sunday Silence, one of the great ones of all time. And uh, they're dealing with bacterial infection. They had three surgeries yeah. on this horse, developed a little laminitis, and that's always a troublesome thing in the uh, right foreleg. And that's what they're dealing with. They're working mm -hmm. with magnets. They're trying all sorts of stuff. They're trying to, uh, to increase the circulation yeah. of blood to help him. But he's obviously, they say, in pain. But they say he's such a strong horse that he doesn't let on to how much pain he's in. He's just trying to stand up. And they're worried that if he does actually lay down and sit down, he won't be able to get back up again. And then he's really in trouble. So uh, the next couple of days, very grave and very serious for Sunday Silence. And of course, we're all pulling for him right here at TVG. We talked earlier today about uh, the problems of certain trainers. Emergency have. colic surgery for him on Saturday. The surgery was a success, but the Whitney winner will probably be retired. He is a five-year-old. And Kentucky Derby winner and leading Japanese sire Sunday Silence holding on in his battle with laminitis. He already has a serious tendon problem in his right front. Trying to get off that, he's developed laminitis on his left front, and now he's got swelling in his hind legs. At least 100 to 1 odds against him making it another week. And a big disappointment that is. Still to come on Long John Silver's Wire to Wire. And here's the race we've been waiting for. Sunday Silence on the outside. Easy go at the right eye head and head coming to the eighth ball. Sunday Silence and Pat Valenzuela. Easy go and Pat Day. Head and head through the stretch. What a horse race this one is. Easy go and Sunday Silence going nose and nose in the Preakness. Sunday Silence, easy go. Here's the finish. Sunday Silence wins it by a nose. Well, racing lost one of its superstars last week, 1989 Kentucky Derby, Preakness, which is the race you just saw, and Breeders' Cup Classic winner Sunday Silence was humanely euthanized following a courageous but brief battle with laminitis. Here's Jeff Lipson with more. His first public appearance as a potential racehorse, understated. Sunday Silence slipped into the Keeneland sales ring like some late arrival at an afternoon matinee. The year was 1987, and the hammer price for the nearly black son of Halo, $17,000. He was gangly. He was, to put it politely, a project. But he had the body of a classic distance runner and a trainer who could turn project into prodigy. The legendary Charlie Whittingham had just won his first Kentucky Derby the year before and now had a consuming drive to smell the roses again. Sunday Silence arrived in Louisville in 1989, overshadowed by Easy Goer, the big red son of Aladar. But Charlie Whittingham had Sunday Silence ready for the Saturday of his life. On a muddy afternoon with snowflakes in the air, there were rose petals swirling around the colt, who finally was no longer an afterthought. Sunday Silence wins this derby by two lengths. And here's the race we've been waiting for. Two weeks later, Sunday Silence and Easy Goer hooked up again in the Preakness Stakes, a stretch drive where the two heavyweights traded roundhouse haymakers. Sunday Silence may be a little braver or a little better that day. What a horse race this one is! Easy Goer and Sunday Silence going nose and nose in the Preakness. Sunday Silence, Easy Goer, here's the finish. Sunday Silence. They're in the stretch. It's Easy Goer on the outside, getting cleared now by two. Sunday Silence remains in second. Not so in the Belmont Stakes. Easy Goer humbling Sunday Silence in New York, crushing all hope of a triple crown, setting up a rematch to answer the question, who is the best three-year-old of 1989? Sunday Silence, a threatening presence on the outside. The answer came in the gloaming at Gulfstream Park, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Sunday Silence holding off the steamrolling easygoer at the wire. To the front, pushing John, trying to fight back. Easygoer with one final acceleration, and Sunday Silence holds on, and he wins by a desperate neck. Three-year-old of the year, horse of the year, and soon to be emperor of Japan. Sunday Silence is sold for stud duty to the Japanese and doesn't disappoint. He becomes the leading sire, topping the list every year from 1995 through today. 
his offspring earning more than $300 million and still climbing. The project turned prodigy was in the end a phenomenon. Well, if you are a racing fan, certainly Sunday Silence gave you some great memories back in the late 1980s and that spectacular year of 1989, those great battles with Easy Go are a, a, truly a great loss for the sport. Things move on. Well, I never saw him in a winning effort, but I did see him in person and the excitement he generated when he came to Belmont Park in that bid for the Triple Crown. Uh, he actually created quite a bit of excitement for Charlie Whittingham by uh, actually rearing up and uh, getting scared of a light camera, a light pole, and reared up and struck Charlie and knocked him down. Charlie had to have a couple stitches put in his head. He created a lot of excitement for his exercise rider, Pam Mapes, who actually works for TVG now in the graphics department. But all the people around him realized early on he was well worth a lot of uh, trouble and time. He was the type of horse that required a lot of time, but was well worth the wait. And the fans really mourned him greatly in Japan as well as in this country. Uh, where Sunday Silence died because in, in Japan they actually had fan clubs and mm -hmm. legions of fans who, who knew his name well. Well, Sunday Silence no longer with us, gone at the age of 16. Moving on now with Saturday's Graham. We're talking Long John Silver's Wire to Wire next. Silence came to an end on August 19th. It was the end of a 14 week battle that started with leg infection, led to laminitis, and finally concluded with heart failure. Sunday Silence won the 1989 Kentucky Derby. It was the start of quite a rivalry with Easy Goer. Sunday Silence won the Preakness and then lost to Easy Goer in the Belmont. He was named Horse of the Year in 1989, capping the year with a victory in the Breeders' Cup Classic, besting Easy Goer one more time. Let's relive that call from 13 years ago. Sunday Silence surges to the front, rushing John, trying to fight back. Easy Goer with one final acceleration, and Sunday Silence holds on. Zenya Yoshida purchased Sunday Silence at the end of his racing career. He started in Japan in 1991. He was the, le the leading sire in Japan at the time of his death. Next, the Phillies and the Juvenile Colts. Since we last left you on Wire to Wire, War Emblem was sold by the Thoroughbred Corporation for a reported $17 million to a Japanese farm. He will stand stud there, and the hopes of the Japanese Shaddai Stallion Station is he will replace the great Sunday Silence, who passed away this year, one of the most prolific stallions and influential stallions in Japanese racing. War Emblem, of course, the winner of the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. We expect to see him going on to the Breeders' Cup, and then will retire at the end of this season, moving to Japan to stand stud. Great Woodwind on Saturday. You've met the trainers, you've seen the horses, you've had the review. Come out and make your own decision. But soon we'll be discussing the three-year-olds, and John Preach will be here as our three-year-old expert. So we're giving you a little preview, because we've seen some beauties over the last six weeks right here, and we're going to look at the two-year-olds that are just beginning to emerge as future stars. And we'll begin with a horse called Is It True? We just won the other day here. Well, Harvey, this is the third race on Saturday. That gentleman looking around left and right is Angel Cordero, of course. Uh, this horse is going to win by 15 and a half lengths. He's going to stop the timer in 109 and 1. Well, he was no match for a horse called Easy Goer at Saratoga, who had really had no difficulty beating him by two and a half lengths that day. But this is Is It True's last time out, and as you can see, it's a long way back to the rest of them. 15 length wins. We actually had another one the other day by another two year old, I believe. Uh, a Lucas horse won by about 15 on Sunday. Uh, he's, he's fully loaded. That was some romance and, and off the wet track. Yeah, but another one. However, the horse that really got us started on a two year old was a horse called Houston. He came here and he was the fastest horse in the world, and that day he really was, maybe too fast. This is July 27th, the fourth race. This is also Pat Day who rides Easy Goer. We can see he just switched over to his right lead. This is a Seattle Flu Colt at a smart angle, and I don't know if I have seen a more impressive winning debut, first time out, uh, since this horse's sire broke his maiden in 1976. Running off the picture, six furlongs in 110 and four, and Harvey, 
really all under a loose rein. He wasn't really at the speed. Well, the problem we have with these is we uh, let the horses run out of the picture because most of the people that track are betting the exactor and want to see who struggled in for second, unless it's a stake race. So in the races that we're showing you, they're going to leave the screen. And nobody's going to read the screen much more effectively than the horse we're about to look at. The one we're all talking about because this horse went six and a half furlongs here, and we'll talk about that as you see the race. This is easy goer. This isn't a bad win that you're about to see. Uh, is this a five-year-old in disguise? I don't know. Easy Goer is the chestnut horse, the third one in your picture. There's some dueling leaders here. Pat Day again comes back from the Midwest for this ride. As you can see, he angles his course to the inside under a left-handed whip. He does not hesitate to go through that hole. Uh, very good education for this horse. He's making his third start. As you can see, Pat just went over to his right hand. Uh, just look at the stride on this animal and realize how professional he is. He runs straight as a string. He's a and terrific animal. To realize how professional, older horses a little later in the day went that same distance. And I'm talking about older non-winners of three other than, which is practically stake race horses. They went 117. Easy goer went 115 and two. He's a full to Cadillacing, but he has tactical speed, but he likes to come off the pace. And as John points out, a very professional looking racehorse. Uh, he's true. He, he was buck jumping in the paddock, they tell me. I did see him actually buck jumping on the way to the post. Uh, he's, a, he's a fighter, he's a gorilla, he's a bear. Mr. McGahey is just loaded with riches, and so is the Phipps Barn, and it's a combination that has come together at just the right time. A super horseman, and the breeding is finally paying off. They went out, they built their breeding operations, they stopped inbreeding so much, and it's really paying off on the racetrack. And that, speaking of that, we're about to look at a race of the week, actually. It was the battle race. in New York takes place. The Triple Crown is on the line at Belmont Park next Saturday. There are lots of questions to be answered, like who will be the favorite, the entry of Easy Goer, an all-inspiring, or the only horse that has a chance to win the rare Triple Crown, Sunday Silence. Charlie Whittingham thinks it's going to be Sunday Silent. I've trained so many horses to long races at Capistrano in California. I've won 14 times. That's a mile and a half. So I'm good at long races. I'm better at long than I am at short. He's an easy horse to train. He's a willing. He likes to train. And he's got a lot of, lot of, lot of power, a lot of staying power. Charlie, you've accomplished so much. You're a Hall of Famer. You've won more stakes races than anybody in the history of this game. What would a triple crown mean to Charlie Whittingham? Well, it would be, I guess, another feather in my hat. And uh, which I haven't done, and let's hope I can. Well, the amateur riders with the digest to preview the Belmont, and with more good news from California. Stay with us. Things like this Saturday at Belmont Park, the Triple Crown is on the line for Sunday Silence. 22, 22 horses have won the first two legs. Only 11 have won all three. Nine horses are expected to challenge Sunday Silence, including Easy Goer, who is back on his home turf. In the 121st Belmont Stakes, Easy Goer will try to regain lost glory after second place finishes in the first two jewels of the Triple Crown, while Sunday Silence will attempt to become the first Triple Crown winner in 11 years. His trainer believes the Belmont will be the easiest race of the Triple for his colt. Well, I'm, I hope so, but uh, <laughs> the other horse, Easy Gore, is a tough horse, and we'll see how the track is and everything, but uh, we're coming up to the race so far perfectly. We have no setbacks. Uh, I think we're in as good a shape as we've been in any, maybe better than the last race. Easy Gore and Sunday Silence! And what a race that Preakness was, a nose-to-nose -nose battle that Shug McGahey hopes has toughened Easy Gore for the Belmont. Maybe we'll improve a little bit off of uh, our last race. That was really the first time that he'd ever been uh, hooked and had to run, you know, head-to-head -head with a horse for that long. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll make him a little bit more aggressive in uh, what he has to do. And McGahey has another Belmont threat, awe-inspiring, winner of the recent Jersey Derby, who ran third in the Kentucky Derby. He's improved dramatically in the last couple of months, and... Uh, I think he's a lot better horse right now than uh, when I ran him in the Derby, and uh, he ran a big race in the Derby, only beat two and a half lengths. And Imbibe, winner of Belmont's Peter Pan Stakes, may be the best of remaining contenders. But with Sunday Silence going after the triple, the rest may be running for second place money. The Belmont Stakes is known as the test of a champion. Trainer Charlie Whittingham is very confident that Sunday Silence will pass his next test to become racing's 12th Triple Crown winner. Is he a super horse? I believe he is. 
Maybe the horse of the decade? Uh, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'll settle for it anyway. At Belmont Park, Mike Hartnett for the Budweiser Thoroughbred Digest. Thank you, Mike. Now let's take a look at the Triple Crown bonus situation. Sunday Silence, if he wins, will receive a $5 million bonus. Now if he doesn't win, the horse with the most points will win a million dollars. Now Easy Goer can win the million if he wins the Belmont and Sunday Silence finishes out of the money. If you remember, that happened to Ali Sheba back in 1987. Well, it's going to take teamwork from not only Charlie Whittingham and his stable, but from jockey Pat Valenzuela if Sunday Silence is to come home a winner. Valenzuela is a fierce competitor with a drive to win. Ever since his winning ride in the Kentucky Derby aboard Sunday Silence, the accolades have been pouring in for jockey Pat Valenzuela. Trainer Charlie Whittingham calls him a great position rider, and he has long had the reputation as one of the country's best jockeys out of the gate. Now 26 years old, Pat Val has come a long way since he took California by storm in 1980, setting a record of 83 wins as an apprentice at Santa Anita. But then he was born to be a rider. Preceded by his father, A.C., his uncle, Milo, who won the 1958 Derby in Preakness, and two older brothers who rode. Pat literally grew up on the backstretch of racetracks in New Mexico, and he's still well-remembered there. Well, I remember him. He's a very sharp boy. He was a good gate boy from the word the time he started. He was just had the instinct to leave the gate, and he's quick away from there, and very heady little rider. And some of the trainers who first put him up on horses at Sunland Park remember Pat for his ability, but also for his love of pool tables and card games. Oh, every day, and uh, we were, uh, we really had a good time every day playing those cards. And we didn't have much uh, money, but uh, uh, we played for pennies and nickels, but uh, we had a lot of fun. Valenzuela rode his first winter at Sunland Park on November 10, 1978. A three-year-old filly named Parker Petit for a $1,300 purse. He's approaching the top of his profession now and already has reached heights that some of his fellow New Mexicans admit they couldn't predict. No, not, not at all. I sure couldn't. We knew he was a nice person and, you know, he was friendly and got along well with everybody. But as far as being a superstar, we couldn't foresee that. Best of luck to Pat Val, Atlantic City Racetrack Association Simulcasting Network. Well, joining us on the set of the Thoroughbred Digest, Bruce Casella, as always. And Bruce, the spotlight back on Sunday Silence. Well, Chris, get out your Sunday Silence T-shirts uh, printed up by Thoroughbred Racing Communications. I'll give you the number in a little bit. Uh, While well, he's back and ready to race this Sunday in the Swap Stakes at Hollywood Park, his trainer Charlie Whittingham says the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner is cool, calm, and ready to win. Well, he's come back good. He had no trouble, come back, had a little bit of a rest. He's not, of course, likes to rest too much anyway. He's kind of very ambitious and got a lot of fire, so. But he's doing, he's trained very well here. And hey, he's not lonesome for the beast. It's too warm back there right now. He likes to hear where it's cool. He's been behaving pretty good. Oh, yeah, he hadn't kicked me yet, but I'm, I'm a little lighter afoot now. I got my tennis shoes on. <laughs> You remember Charlie Whittingham got kicked by Sunday Silence just before the Belmont Stakes. Others expected in the swaps raise a stanza, prize, and notorious pleasure. Well, you know, Sunday Silence was purchased at Keeneland back in 1987. Well, this week, the racing world, included Charlie Whittingham, is in Lexington to find another Kentucky Derby winner. Mike Hartnett has this report. I'm Chris Lincoln. Well, welcome back along the rail as we take you to the nation's top thoroughbred racetracks for our weekly Budweiser Thoroughbred Digest show. We've got a lot of top stakes races to show you, so let's go to the post with this week's Breeders' Cup Feature Race of the Week. The Feature Race, brought to you by the Breeders' Cup, promoting racing year-round with the Breeders' Cup Budweiser Special Stakes Program, the new Premium Stakes Program, and the Breeders' Cup Day. Racing's $10 million championship. Our feature race, the Grade 2 Swap Stakes from Hollywood Park. $400,000 added to three-year-olds go a mile and a quarter. Here is the field, a short field because of the big horse. Sunday Silence at 1-5 to five with Pat Valenzuela carrying his derby weight of 126. Will break from the two-hole, broke the mole, and raise the stanza beside him. Rounding out the short field, endow the four-horse and prize on the outside at 5-1. to one. Here's the call of the Swap Stakes at Hollywood Park. 
and they're off. Raise a stanza, veered out at the start, and Dow from the outside going for the lead. Raise a stanza is second. Sunday Silence right there, third. Broke the mold is fourth at the rail. Prized is the early trailer, but there's only two lengths from the front of the back as the three-year-olds head for the clubhouse turn. And Sunday Silence has a head in front of Raise a stanza, who races second the outside. Broke the mold is third, saves the rail. And Dow splits them fourth. Prized is still the trailer, three and a half off the lead. Beginning with their long run down the back stretch, and it's Sunday Silence. Well within himself, he's drawing clear a length and one half. Raise a stanza, his second by two. Broke the mold, third, continues to save the rail. Prized comes a closer fourth. The trailer is now in Dow, eight off the lead. Approaching the half mile pole, Sunday Silence broke the mold, the longest shot in the field, drives quickly second the rail. Raise a stanza third from the center of the course, prize in the fourth spot, and in Dow is still the trailer. Into the far turn, and Sunday Silence has yet to be challenged. Patrick Valenzuela now lets out a notch. He draws clear by three. Broke the mold second prize coming up quickly. He'll be the one to challenge the Kentucky Derby champ with a quarter of a mile to come in the swap stakes. It's Sunday silence by four. Prized is second, broke the mold third, and in Dow as they sweep off the turn and come down the lane. He's showing why he's the champion three-year-old. It's Sunday Silence. Prize coming after him though with a late run. It's Prize, Sunday Silence, Prize in a major upset. Charlie Whittingham, none too pleased as Sunday Silence again uh, does his duck routine he showed in the uh, Kentucky Derby stretch, had some problems there. They say that Pat Valenzuela will keep them out. Next is the uh, Molson Million up in Canada, then to the Super Derby for Sunday Silence, beaten in this race by Prize, who is owned by Clover Racing Stable, trained by Neil Drysdale, ridden beautifully by Eddie Delahousse with a big price there. Shouldn't surprise that many people. The swaps was such a surprise there. In 77, J.O. Tobin handed Seattle Slew his first loss after a triple crown sweep. Turkman beaten there in 85. Let's go now inside the daily racing form for a closer look at Sunday Silence's upset loss. Here's Mark Radsky of the racing form. Sunday Silence looked every part of a one to five shot through the early stages of the race. He got to the half in 47 and three, which is certainly walking out here, uh, three quarters and 11 and four. And he actually increased his advantage from the uh, quarter pole to the eighth pole and had four lengths at that point. And it really looked like he was just on his way to an easy victory. Prize had made a little run at him, but uh, really didn't look like he had much of a chance. And then suddenly about the 16th pole, he started to weave a little bit and uh, Delahousse aboard Prize just uh, went after him and uh, in a split second it seemed like he went right by him coming to the wire and actually was drawing away at the end by three quarters and uh, it's kind of hard to, to decide if Sunday Silence actually gave him the race or if Prize just had an exceptional burst there. The, the time of the race was slow to a one of four but the track had been playing uh, very off the entire weekend. Quite an upset in the swaps. When we come back, Bruce Casella joins us with the top... 1989, the racing world focused on the rivalry between Sunday Silence and Easy Goer. It was one that pitted the raw talent of Sunday Silence against the regal ability of Easy Goer. In the end, Charlie Whittingham's Sunday Silence won three of their four meetings and was named the 1989 Horse of the Year. Now, after Sunday Silence's first stakes win, which came in the San Felipe, his exercise rider knew that she was in for the ride of her life. remember that he was wild. He was passion, like he just um, loved what he did. I think there are some horses that love feed time, some horses love night time. He liked to go to the racetrack and train. He loved it, couldn't wait for it, couldn't get there quick enough. He was Michael Jordan. He was all legs and he was, didn't carry a lot of weight and he was just such an athlete, just sinewy athlete. I think we went a mile, maybe seven eighths or something, and I just sat and sat and sat and waited. And I wanted to ask him to run so bad because I knew I had, like, I hadn't even put my foot on the accelerator. I hadn't even asked him to run yet. And, and Charlie would have gotten mad if I'd let him go, so I couldn't let him go, but I came back 
my eyes big as saucers and Charlie had that little twinkle in his eye and he gave me a wink and said, I think we got a good one here, girl. More than anything else on the racetrack, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. He was just bigger than life, you know? He was like, a, he really was a legend in his own time, you know, not afterwards or anything. He just knew horses. He knew what they could do. I mean, just when you think, why is Charlie doing this with this horse? It would work out, you know, and he would be, a, he was a genius. Well, we were really excited because we knew he was that good, but he hadn't gone a mile on the 16th yet. I'm not even certain he'd gone two turns. And the gates opened, and he went right down on his nose. And, of course, everybody just went, oh, my God, you know? And now he's, I don't know, he's not uh, trailing the field or anything, but he's definitely not in the position that we expected him to be in. And um, he was a turn runner. He loved to run on the turns. His acceleration was around the turns. So by the time he got to the backside, he was right in position perfectly, and then down the lane, he just drew away from him. On the morning of the Breeders' Cup race, Charlie had said to me, let him, let him, we're going to let him gallop out the last straights of a mile, let him go a little bit. And Sunday Sounds, as soon as they turn him loose, he just goes, you know, he just galloped. Well, I look over my shoulder, and here's Easy Goer right at Sunday Sounds' hip. And David Carroll, who galloped Easy Goer, turned to me, and he just shook his head. And I, I'm shaking my head, and I said, you want to race? But anyway, so his horse kind of, he backed off his horse, and my jacket started to flap it, and Sunday Sounds took off. And so thank heavens Charlie wanted me to work through eights, because I was going to anyway. Sometimes I'd have to pinch myself when I'd wake up in the morning and think, is this really happening, you know? This is, this is something that doesn't happen to people on their whole lives on the racetrack. And to do it with a horse that was so special like he was, and then to do it with Charlie. It was just, uh, sometimes you get so carried away in the moment that you don't really, you really have to stop yourself and go, this is incredible.